Hi everyone, I'm Justisa, and welcome to Dark History of Sweden. I know that I said that we were gonna talk about a murder case this week, but as I was writing it, I realized that there was so much to it that I felt that I needed a little bit more time to gather all the facts. But worry not, I have other interesting things to talk about. We are moving on with Haunted Places. So welcome to my new series, Hauntings of Sweden. Today we will talk about a medieval castle called Torpa Stenhus. Torpa Stonehouse, if you translate it. Allegedly, it is haunted by five different spirits. I did talk about a similar place a few months ago, Glimmingehus. There will be a link up in the corner and at the end of this video. But first, a little history about the castle itself. Torpa Seinhus is located in Lenghem Parish, which is the, in the county Tranemu in the region of Vestorjatland. The castle lies west of the lake Osunden. East of the castle lies Torpa Nesset's nature reserve. The first building was built in 1470 by cabinet minister Arvid Knutsson as a defense stronghold against the Danish. In 1550, the tower was built and they did some reconstructioning and remodeling between the late 1500s and early 1600s. The Knights Hall has been well preserved in the Renaissance interior, and the castle chapel has been well kept in its 1600s Baroque style. Torpa was the family estate of the Steinbock family, and it has always been inherited by someone of that family, male or female. King Gustav Vasa actually married Katarina Steinbock, who lived at Torpa Stenhus. It was his third wife, and she was Queen of Sweden between the years of 1552 until he died in 1560. Enough of the history and more of the ghost stories. Like I said before, there is said to be five different spirits still residing at Torpa Stenhus. And I will talk a little about all of them. According to legend, the Grey Lady was once the daughter of one of the mighty lords of the castle. She fell in love with a Danish prisoner of the castle, but her father, the Lord, had him beheaded. She fell ill and then died of grief. Ever since then, she has haunted the castle walking around the halls, crying. But she is said to be a very caring spirit that protects and warns people of dangers. The story of this spirit is a bit on the darker side. The girl had been to Denmark to visit some relatives, and when she came back, she confided in her sister that she believed that someone on the ship had had the plague. Her father, who was a knight, had overheard this conversation and because of the fear of the disease and its spread, he decided that he had to get rid of the girl. But he also realized that he had to do it as smoothly as possible. He woke her up in the middle of the night and placed her on a chair in front of a window. The masons arrived and started to break her inside the room. She was still alive at this point. According to rumors, three building workers tried to break down the wall into the room where she was placed. But they all died before they succeeded. One fell down the stairs and got blood poisoning after being cut by something sharp uh, in the fall, and another one had a heart attack. I don't know what happened to the third one, but he died. Allegedly, the reason these men died was her younger sister. Apparently, she felt so sorry for her that she sat outside of the bricked up room every hour of the day, keeping her company, talking to her, listening to her cries of despair for four days. On the fifth day, she could no longer hear her beloved sister's cries. So she cast a curse on the wall, so that no one would ever disturb her again. A 
a beautiful carriage with four white horses and a charioteer dressed in the house colors. It is only to be seen by the current owner when they are close to death. In the royal hall, there is a large portrait of Count Gustav Otto Steinbock. If you stand under this portrait at midnight and call out to him, he will, according to the legend, shake the castle so violently that he can barely stand straight. Alla skola falla till golvet. All shall fall to the floor. Gustav Otto Steinbock's firstborn son, Gustav Steinbock. At the age of three, he died a tragic death by drowning in the well by the castle. Ever since, this little boy wanders around the great halls of Torpa Steinhus. Many visitors, especially women, have said that they have seen a small, pale boy in antique clothing. If you wish to visit Torpa Steinhus, they have guided tours all year around, but you will have to book it with them. Otherwise, they are only open parts of the year. I think it's from April till about the end of October. It's best to check it out at their page. I will link it down in the description box. You can also rent the castle for weddings or conferences. They also have places for you to stay and there is so much more to look at than just the castle. The scenery there is freaking gorgeous. That was all I had on Torpa Steinhus and its hauntings. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss a video. I want to take the time to thank you guys for helping me reach my goal of 500 subscribers. Three days after my last Dark History of Sweden video, we hit 500. And I am so grateful for all of you for your support and for subscribing and for watching my videos. My next goal is a thousand and if we reach a thousand before the end of this year, I will do something big on this channel. Thank you for watching once again. Take care of each other and yourself and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!